Um, dear doctors, good afternoon and welcome everyone to the inaugural session of our Transcatheter Mitral Valve Breakthroughs webinar series. Over the next few weeks, we will be delving into the forefront of heart care, exploring groundbreaking techniques and innovations in transcatheter interventions. This series will be divided into eight sessions, with each session focusing on a different aspects of the topic, allowing us to dive deeper into various key areas. Today, uh, we start with a deep dive into transcatheter mitral valve replacements versus medical therapy and managing secondary mitral valve regurgitation, led by our esteemed doctor, Suruk Ramadan. So get ready for an engaging and enlightening session filled with valuable insights and expertise. Without any further ado, let's begin. I'm giving the word to our doctor. So hello, everyone. My name is Shuruk Ramadan. Uh, I'm an international medical graduate and working currently as primary care physician in Ministry of Health in Egypt. And I'm very passionate about cardiology research. And that's the topic of our session today. Uh, so let's start. First, uh, I want to welcome Nazir and uh, Shaima. Hi, thank you for being here with me today. Thanks, you, Doctor. <laughs> thank you so, for joining us, Dr. Shuruk. Thank you. So uh, now I will share my screen to my presentation. So can you see the presentation now? Is it okay? Yes, we can yeah. see. Yes, no. Okay. So uh, our first very session uh, about transcatheter mitral valve repair uh, versus medical therapy and treating secondary mitral valve regurgitation. Uh, before we um, talk about our research about that, let's talk about and have a deep look into the history of the operation. Okay, so our very first session would be about transcatheter mitral valve repair versus medical therapy in treating secondary mitral valve regurgitation. And before we go deeper into the our research about that, uh, we should take a deeper look into the tear operation and its history, because it's very important to see about the clinical evidence about the tear operation, okay? So the background of tear, um, i.e. transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge mitral repair, it's a very promising uh, operation mm, maintained for patients with severe secondary mitral regurgitation who are not candidate for mitral surgery. It's a minimally invasive procedure involving a catheter to develop, deliver a clip that um, approaching the mitral valve leaflet, effectively reducing the amount of blood flow that regurgitates the blood back into the left atrium during the systole. And the procedure, sorry, the procedure itself is typically performed under uh, transesophageal echocardiographic criteria to ensure the proper clip placement and reduction of the mitral regurgitation. Firstly, uh, in 2018, it was estimated that over uh, 15,000 mitral clip procedures had been performed worldwide, with a significant portion of these conducted in the USA. Okay, so about the history, very, very history about the tear operation, first developed by Dr. Ottavio Alferi and his team in the early 20s. The concept was based on the Alferi surgical technique of edge-to-edge -edge repair. And by the way, Dr. Ottavio Alferi is a cardio interventional cardiologist in Milan uh, and the chief of the head, head of the department of the cardiovascular surgery in Milan University in Italy. So uh, of course, the device, mitral clip device, uh, it's CE approved in Europe in uh, 2018 and FDA approved in the United States in 2013. Okay, so, um, and very advancement with, um, after that early by Dr. Alfred procedure, many advancement and update and very updated version uh, continue to follow. Uh, in the mitral clip system, including better clip delivery system, enhancing imaging modalities, and a broader range of clip sizes and configuration. So uh, until that, it would be 
uh, it has been adopted worldwide and is now performed in many centers as a routine treatment option for mitral valve regurgitation for patients who are not candidate for surgery. So uh, this is the mitra tier two devices. The one on the left is mitra clip by Abbott Vascular Company, and the one on the right is the Pascal by Edward Life Sciences. So let's talk about the indication for the tear operation. As I told, um, as I said, the patient with symptomatic moderate to severe secondary mitral regurg despite optical, optimal medical therapy are judged by a heart team to appropriate for a heart, re heart repair. And also patients with severe symptomatic primary mitral regurg who are at, at high risk for mitral valve surgery um, including cardiac surgeon experiences and um, under also a echocardiographic criteria because it's a primary mitral regurgitation. It's not for tear, mainly the surgical uh, surgery only. It's for primary mitral regurg. But in very, very severe symptoms in mitral regurg patient, we, at high risk for surgery, we can do it as a second option of treatment. And also, it can we can do this for heart failure patient with with severe symptoms and who remain symptomatic despite the optimal medical therapy. And as I said, also uh, under very specific echocardiographic criteria, it's very important, including leaflet anatomy and leaflet motion and absence of extensive leaflet calcification or other factors that would prevent the proper clip placement. So. This is the 2020 ACC AHA guideline for the management of patients with severe valvular heart disease. Uh, as you see here, the severe mitral regurg stage D, um, right ventricular volume above 60 and uh, right ventricular fraction above 50, we can divide the patient into, into main, uh, two main categories. The first one category like left ventricular ejection fraction above 50% with severe persistent symptoms on optimal treatment and atrial fibrillation treatment would be uh, the optimal treatment for this type of the patient is mitral valve surgery. And the second category like left ventricular ejection fraction below 50% on optimal medical treatment and favorable mitral anatomy Favorable mitral anatomy means like a left ventricular ejection fraction from 20% to 50% and left ventricular in systolic diameter below 70 millimeter would uh, go for tear and the severe, severe symptoms would be, um, would be favored like mitral valve surgery. So we have three main trials three late breaking through trials uh, mainly conducted uh, about tear operation itself. And uh, first, the very early one trial, Everest trial. Everest trial was established in measuring the safety and efficacy of tear with mitral rigor system. Uh, and it shows that none, there is no inferiority of tear compared to the surgery um, in certain patient population. So the second trial is a co-apt trial. By the way, the co-apt trial was very, very big trial. And when I was in the TCT in the last, uh, in the last October in California, it was very, very updating, update about the co-apt trial. It was very, very astonishing results about that. So it's a very powerful study. Uh, co-apt trial first published in 2018. Uh, they evaluated the tear with mitral clip system in patients with heart failure and moderated to severe uh, secondary mitral regurg. The results was uh, this is trial showed a significant reduction in heart failure hospitalizations and improved survival with tear compared to medical therapy alone. And the third big trial uh, we can talk about is the MITRA-FR trial. The MITRA-FR trial published in 2019. 
uh, evaluate the tear with mitral clip system in patients with severe secondary mitral regurg. But this trial didn't show any significant benefit of tear over the medical therapy alone in terms of compromise the endpoint of the death and rehospitalization uh, from the surgery. So there is a debate between the two major trials, COAPT trial and mitral FR trial. There was a major debate about the results. So we can conclude that the difference between the results of the two major clinical trials in the patient population type included in the trials. The COAPT trial included patients with severe heart failure and severe symptoms in secondary MR who remained symptomatic despite the medical therapy. But the MITRA FR included patients with severe mitral regurg patient symptoms, uh, included also the, the same type of the patients, but the severity of heart failure varies, and patients were not required to remain symptomatic despite the optical, optimal medical therapy. So there was like a different targets between the endpoints of the study. The primary endpoint in the co trial was heart failure hospitalizations was significantly reduced with tear operation compared to medical therapy alone. But the, in the mitra FR, primary endpoint was a composite of death from any cause or rehospitalization for heart failure in a period like 20, uh, 12 months, okay, which did not show a significant difference between tear and medical therapy. And the optimization of medical therapy itself between the two trials, uh, co op trial was very, very specified, the medical therapy optimization protocol compared to the mitral FR, which may have inf also have its own influence in the outcome. And of course, the experience and the patient load and the volume of the patient and difference of centers uh, performing the two trials also may have the influence. And mitral valve anatomy itself in the patient populations uh, in the two trials may have influenced the response to tear and the outcome. And of course, there is always a possibility that differing the results could be due to chance, given the complexity of the patient population and variability in outcomes. So um, when we saw we, we were studying the literature about the tear and we we could notice the debate between two major trials the f uh, the mitra fr and co after trial we did our own research to conclude very very specific specified outcome about the tear operation versus medical therapy in this patient population we did a systematic review and meta-analysis about this topic because it's very very important to conclude them from two major trials to conclude and to reach a conclusion about the tier operation itself. And it was accepted like an uh, abstract presentation in TCT and I was the presenter there. So I, would, I can share with you our methodology. We followed the PRISMA guidelines while preparing the systematic review and meta-analysis. We conducted a literature search through different databases like PubMed, Web of Science, Scopus, Google Scholar, and Cochrane Library. And we included randomized control trials or retrospective cohorts in patients in second, uh, having secondary mitral regurg. And the intervention in these trials was a transcatheter edge-to-edge mitral valve repair, comparing guideline directed medical therapy. And the main, the main results of our study, after including eight RCTs, uh, including two, uh, eight to four patients were included in this analysis. The overall effect of uh, one year survival was in favor of tier with its significant p-value. And regarding the other metrics, like a overall effect, uh, death or hospitalization due to heart failure, all-cause mortality, and cardiac death, there was no statistically significant difference between tear versus medical therapy. And the first plot of our analysis, this one shows a one year survival of the tear versus medical therapy, and it has a statistically significant difference favoring the tear here, as you can see. 
And this is the first plot of the death or hospitalization due to heart failure after tear operation. As, and this is the all cause mortality. And this is the cardiac death. And as we can see, there's no statistically significant difference between tear and, G and the medical treatment. So we reached our conclusion. Although TIR has been considered a promising therapy for patients with severe mitral valve disease, in the last decade, there was no statistically significant difference between its use compared to GDMT in severe mitral valve regurgitation in uh, hospitalization and cardiac death and the all-cause mortality. But we can conclude a very important point as a one-year survival of mitral valve regurgitation patient favors the tear operation. So this is a take-home message from our presentation. Tear is a minimally invasive alternative to surgery for selected patients with mitral valve regurgitation, trying to improve the symptoms and the quality of life in this patient who are not suitable for the surgery. And the indication of tear is a patient with symptomatic moderate to severe mitral valve regurg who are at high risk in high risk for surgery, as well as the patient with several symptoms who remain symptomatic despite the medical treatment. And the procedure is performed using the mitra clip or Pascal system, which are clips delivered via a catheter and used to grasp the edges of the mitral valve leaflet, reducing the mitral regurgitation. And the clinical trials, the very major trials, um, including COAPT and Everest, have demonstrated the safety and efficacy of TIR in reducing the heart failure hospitalizations and improving survival in certain patient populations. The complication of TIR can include uh, vascular injury, bleeding, stroke, um, need for in additional intervention by uh, specific teams. Proper patient selection uh, should be, uh, we should be careful about for minimizing the complication. And the decision to perform the tier should be made by a multidisciplinary heart team based on individual patient factors, including mitral valve anatomy and comorbidities and expected benefit from the procedure. And of course, we need ongoing research is, um, uh, about the tier on improving the patient selection criteria, refining procedure techniques, and developing new devices for tier. Long-term outcomes and durability of tier are areas of active investigation now under research. So uh, now we reached the end of our presentation. Thank you very much for uh, joining me and that was a very my it's my pleasure to uh, be here with you thank you very much and I thank you dr shrug thank you thank you thank, thank you. you for your time and thank you for your really precious uh, information and your uh, your study is really precious um, because it's a really shining star in interventional cardiology area and thank you. so i hope we will see uh, you in our next webinar uh, maybe. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Shaima. Thank you, Nadir. It was Dr. my pleasure to be here. <laughs> Likewise. Likewise, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.